Welcome back to our channel. We are James and Kelly, and today we are breaking down our review of the Frontier Go Wild Pass, giving you our personal opinions, telling you how much it actually costs, and is it worth your money? Over the summer, we bought Frontier's Go Wild Pass so that we could travel throughout the United States and visit all of our friends. We knew that flights in the US were getting super expensive, so we thought this was the best way to travel on a budget. Over the summer, we took 14 different flights using Frontier Go Wild Pass, including two international flights. But was it worth it? This video was not sponsored by Frontier Airlines. This is just our personal opinion from two travelers who use the Frontier Go Wild Pass and wanting to help you make the decision on if you should buy it or not. So how much does the Frontier Pass actually cost you? Well, it all depends on when you are purchasing and the months you are purchasing for. We got lucky and bought our passes right when they first started to advertise them for $399 plus tax per person. This got us unlimited Frontier flights for both domestic and international flights. However, there are some terms and agreements that we needed to be aware of. The first one being the time that allows you to book the flights to get the best possible deal. For domestic flights, you can only book 24 hours in advance, and for international flights, up to 10 days in advance. These are only one-way tickets, so in order to get back to your home destination, you will have to follow that exact same policy to get back. For the cost of flights, it's about one cent plus taxes and fees, which averages out to be $15 for domestic flights and about $80 or more for international. This is following their 24 hour and 10 day policy because that's gonna get you the best possible deal. There are different blackout days when using the pass and if the flight is full, you are not going to be able to book a flight using the Frontier Pass. Keep in mind that Frontier is a budget airline, which means luggage and seat selection is not included with your ticket and they are an additional cost. If you purchase the pass and you want to book your flights in advance, there is a way to do that, but it's not going to give you the cheapest option available. Because of all the restrictions from the pass and knowing that Frontier is a budget airline, we had to make an extra purchase of buying the Frontier Elite status for both of us. If you didn't know this already, Frontier cuts costs through its luggage, only allowing you one free item like a small tote bag, a computer bag, or a very small backpack. Since we were traveling for an extended period of time, we knew that we needed more than just a backpack each. This led us to buy Frontier's Elite status for $199 plus tax using a qualifying credit card. Frontier's Elite status allows you to bring a carry-on as well as the bonus of picking your seat. We valued Frontier's Elite status solely through bringing a carry-on because when you book last minute, the cost of luggage is so much higher, averaging around $58 per luggage item item. The price of luggage does change depending on what flight you take, but we knew that if we did not purchase the elite status, we would have paid over $500 per person on our entire trip using the Frontier Go Wild Pass. If you do plan on purchasing the Go Wild Pass, we would definitely recommend purchasing the elite status as well. And to check to see if your credit card qualifies, go ahead and click the link in the description. Does Frontier Airlines fly everywhere? Well, not really. With them advertising as unlimited flights, you would really hope that you would have a lot more options available, but if you do not live in their major hubs like Denver or Miami or even Las Vegas, you're going to have a lot harder of a time trying to get flights to your destination. This was a big struggle for James and I because our friends did not live near the major hubs, so that meant we had very long layovers trying to get to our destinations. Those layovers were at least six or more hours. For international flights, Frontier mainly focuses on the Caribbean islands, so if you're wanting a nice holiday, this is going to be the perfect option for you. But you are going to need to be flexible. Because they have limited flights, you are going to have to really watch those flights and be ready to spend a little extra days in your destination because you might not be able to get a flight out. Another thing to keep in mind with Frontier flights is they do not fly nonstop daily from every location. You're really going to need to plan a little bit in advance, checking out the different routes available, which will help you when you come to the 24 hours and advanced booking page so you know exactly what you are wanting to get. While using our pass, we kept close tabs on all of our costs because at the end, we wanted to see if the pass was really worth it. 
To do this, we compared the cost of the pass plus its taxes and fees per flight versus the cost of the flight without the pass. Because we had to book each flight within 24 hours, and normally this is when the flight is at its most expensive, the pass easily became worth it. We were saving at least 40 to $60 per flight that we were taking, and we know that if you're a last minute booker, this is perfect for you. However, we also wanted to compare the total cost if we had just booked our flights at least one month in advance. Both Kelly and I like to plan and normally book our flights in advance. So we thought this comparison would be useful for us. This is where the pass starts to lose its value drastically. When you book a Frontier flight at least one to two months in advance, the price substantially decreases to a point where it was only a couple dollars more than what we were paying for taxes and fees with our pass. So using these flight prices, the pass did not hold up. If you wanna check out our entire Excel breakdown of the cost comparisons, then go ahead and click the link in the description. Who would the pass work best for? Well, if you have unlimited free time or you live near a major hub, this pass is for you. Frontier's website does advertise the Go Wild Pass as a perfect option available for those remote workers, college students who are on holiday, or someone who can take off whenever they want to go to their destination. If you have unlimited free time and you're wanting to see more of the US, this pass could be a perfect option for you. But make sure to really look at those fine details to see if it's going to work with what you want. This pass is not recommended for those with full-time jobs and are just wanting to get away for the weekend. This is because you are going to be dealing with the long layovers if you don't live in a major hub, or you are going to be dealing with the 24 hours in advance policy and if everyone is traveling that weekend, you might not be able to get back on Monday to start your job. Luckily, this pass worked for James and I because we just returned from China and we knew we wanted to visit all of our friends throughout the US. We didn't know our friend's availability or when we could make it. This allowed us to be completely flexible with our time. We do want to say a big thank you to all of our friends who helped host us while we were using our Frontier Go Wild Pass because there were a few times that we had to extend our stay because we couldn't get a fly out. If you want to see how we used our Frontier Pass, Click up here and watch all of our travels throughout the US. There definitely are some advantages with the pass. One is you can be super flexible and book last minute. If you wake up one day and say, hey, I wanna go to Las Vegas, you definitely can, and you don't have to pay those high last minute prices. If you book a flight using Frontier's Go Wild Pass and your flight happens to get canceled, you can actually change it to the next available time. This happened to us when we were going to Las Vegas and our flight was canceled due to a hurricane, but we were able to change it for the next day using their website. If you live in a hub that flies out to all destinations daily, this is perfect for you because you can pretty much travel anywhere on the same day. If we lived in Denver, it would have made the pass that much more worth it because we wouldn't have to struggle with all the long layovers that we had uh, going to different destinations. The international flights are much cheaper than other airlines, which means if you book an international flight, you have at least 10 days to enjoy your trip, but make sure to remember to book your flight out. And the last advantage is the overall cost of each flight is very inexpensive using the 24 hour in advance policy. This means that you can fly to pretty much all the destinations you want for only $15. Keep in mind that just because the Frontier Go Wild Pass has great advantages, there are some disadvantages that you need to think of before purchasing it. One big one being that you have to book 24 hours in advance to get the best possible deal. This also means that you need to wait 24 hours before booking a hotel because you might not actually get a flight to your destination. This happened to us a few times, one being in the Dominican Republic, one being in Philadelphia, and we had to stay three extra nights at our friend's house in San Antonio because there was a big rainstorm in Las Vegas. Another disadvantage is that if you are wanting to book in advance, you are gonna have to pay a higher cost. For instance, when we were leaving Philadelphia, we knew that flights were limited and we wanted to leave on a specific day, which meant we needed to book our flight in advance. This was about $30 per person, not too expensive, but if we would have just planned in advance, we could have gotten a cheaper option available not using our Go Wild Pass. Another thing to keep in mind is that these are not round trip tickets. These are only one way tickets, 24 hours in advance or 10 days in advance. So during your trip, you're always gonna have to keep in your mind where you're going and when you're gonna have to book your tickets so you can leave to your next destination. 
So in our opinion, would we recommend the Frontier Go Wild Pass? Well, like we've said before, if you live in a hub city and you like spontaneity, then the pass would definitely work out for you. If we lived in Denver, then we would definitely consider buying the pass again. The main reason we bought the pass was so that we could visit our friends who lived throughout the United States when they were available. This allowed us to be very flexible with knowing their schedule and when we knew we could get out there. However, we did struggle with the flight availabilities, um, having long layovers, and trying to get to an airport close enough to where our friends lived. This did make the pass a little less worth it because of the amount of time we were wasting in airports instead of seeing our friends. After looking at our cost comparison, we were a little bit disappointed. However, we do know that the pass is meant for a spontaneous trip, last minute booking, and it's not meant for those who like to plan ahead which is clearly stated in Frontier's advertising of the pass. However, we both know that we also like to plan ahead and we would book our flights in advance and we would have saved more money doing that. The last thing that really upset us about the Frontier Go Wild Pass is towards the end of the summer months when our pass was soon to expire, they canceled almost all of the flights to our home city of Kansas City. This made it very <laughs> difficult for us to get home before the pass expired. Frontier does use supply and demand to know when their flights should be used and when you cancel the flights. So we understand that reasoning as a business, but it does create a disadvantage for you if your home city is not a major hub city. Overall, the pass is definitely based on if it's worth it to you. We just wanted to share our personal experience using the pass. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you found this video useful, make sure to give it a like. And if you have purchased the Frontier Go Wild Pass and you have your own opinions about it, please leave it in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to check out all of our travels coming up. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye-bye.